that information. Um, if you can turn with me in your Bibles to the uh, to Acts, Acts chapter two, and we're going to start in verses forty-two through forty-seven. Forty-two through forty-seven. We're still in our series called Purpose. And church, today we are ending our fast of 21 days of fasting and prayer. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Uh, not because the fast is over, but because of what God has done during the fast and what he's doing post the fast. That God really, uh, man, did y'all feel God really speaking to you and seeing some things move in your life? Uh, man, I, I just really appreciate the time. We're going to do this more, church. Amen. Uh, I told, I was joking with someone this morning, I said, we're going to extend the fast, we're going to do this all year, we're going to fast all year, amen? And they said, Pastor, you crazy, okay? We love the Lord, but, uh, so if you can turn in, uh, your Bibles to Acts, when you get there, please say amen. Uh, we're still in our series called uh, Purpose, uh, and it reads, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of the bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their home and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The title of my sermon is called Created for Com Community. Ooh. Created for Community. Let's all bow for a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, God, for your, your word. Your word is true. God, uh, we want a revelation from you today, Father. I, I don't want to speak today. I want the Holy Spirit to fill me. I want the Holy Spirit to speak through my tongue. God, uh, prepare the hearts of your people. Uh, I don't know what everyone came here today, Father, but let's leave it out the door. And let's open our hearts to receive the word so that we can be transformed uh, and be better. Father, it's in your precious son, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Uh, you may be all be seated in the name of the Lord. Church, as we close our fast, uh, we are closing a portion of our fast, but we are opening up life groups. Okay, life groups. All right, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise or shout, life group, woo, woo. So life groups are small groups where we are able to connect on a spiritual but also a relational basis, okay? So um, we believe that life change occurs in groups, amen? Sunday is great, amen? And so don't neglect gathering together. So Sunday is great, but everyone needs to be connected in a group, uh, and so we have, uh, if you need some more information about groups, you can visit us at the Next Steps table. You can see Miss Andania uh, there who leads our, who's our life groups coordinator. Uh, we are going to be in a group. We're going to be in Sharita and Isaiah's group. Where's Isaiah and Sharita? All right. Woo -woo. All right. Oh, we got a lot of whoops -woo today. What's going on? Okay. It must be a PB thing. We got a lot of PB fucker. All right. I'm not going to talk about you, Denisha. But church... In this social media world, we are more connected, but we're also more distant. If you look at how homes have progressed, and me and Sherelle love going to, uh, to, to homes uh, back in South Carolina. We were there seeing an actual porch, right? We don't have porches uh, anymore on our, we have big backyards, but no porches. And back then, you know, people sat on their porches and they, they yearned for community, and they yearn to, to be connected to one another. And they yearn to have relationships with one another. And we have a Facebook type of relationship, but it's really superficial. Right? You like the person, but you don't know the person. Right? You're not truly concerned about what's going on uh, in their life and, and what's going on. And some of us, social media, although we have many friends, we're still alone. We're still dealing with depression, and we're still dealing with that sense of, of not being connected because we can be on the gram and social media, but what you need is someone in your life to, to experience life with you. And church, I don't know if you've ever been there in, in your alone state, but you know it's a tough, dark place to be where you feel no one understands your concern, no one understands your, your situation. And, and, and what God is revealing to you through, that, through that, that situation is God did not design us to be alone. 
That's why we have life groups, because pastor understands, right, that as, as, as good as the preach word occurs uh, on Sunday morning, we need something more than this. And that's why we have groups. Do y'all like our new sign? Yeah. All right, y'all like that? All right. And at the bottom of it, we want to remind you that we need each other. We're making disciples and building families. But understand this. At Image Church, you are family. And so we do life together. You should never be in a position in your life where you don't have someone to pick up the phone and call. Someone to pray for you. Someone that truly cares about you. And that's what we're going to discuss today in our text. So God did not create us to be Alone, church, that's my first point. He did not create us to be alone. Rick Warren says, God created you not just to believe, but also to belong. Got to catch this. Because many of us in this culture today will come to church, but we don't develop any relationships. We come and get the word, and then we go to our car. Okay? No conversations, no discussions, no text throughout the week. We come to church, get the word, and we gone. Amen? God created you to belong. But understand this, church. Being alone is difficult. Not only is it not good to be al alone, but it is better to be together. Okay? It's not good to be alone, but man, it is so much better to do things together. If I were to lift this podium by myself, I sure could lift the podium, amen? But if I had another brother, another strong brother like yourself, come and help me, it would ease the weight off of me and we would do it together. So in life, when you have some heavy lifting and you're trying to bench press life without a spotter, and all of a sudden, the weight of life falls on you because you thought you were strong in your own strength. But t t try, let me tell you, you're going to face some things in your life that you can't lift by yourself, that you're going to need someone to come and pray on your behalf to get you through where you are. So not only is it not good to be alone, but it's better to be together. Amen? I like this scripture, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, 9 through 12. It says two are better than one because they have good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and hath not another to lift him up. And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A three-four cord is not quickly broken. So yes, the scripture is saying two are better than one. Why? Because that's good reward for your toil. Okay? You can do nothing by yourself. You can't start a business by yourself. You can't work by yourself. All right? You need more than one people. So that's good reward for your toil. Okay? But also what the writer says is, for if they fall, one can help one pick them up. So not only can you grow yourself, or it is better to do more with more people, but who is going to help you when you are by yourself? So church, it's not good to be alone, but it is better to be together. Look at your neighbor and say, I need you. I need you. Church life is a team sport. But here are some people in the Bible that leverage being together. Here's Jesus, who is God in the flesh, but here he is, he gets 12 disciples. Jesus didn't roll solo. He had 12 disciples to be with them. But as you read further, Jesus not only had 12, he had an inner circle, Peter, James, and John. He had some people that when he was going through some deep things in his life, they were strengthening him, amen? Uh, Jonathan uh, and David. 1 Samuel 23 and 16, I don't know if we have it on the screen, but the Bible records that, And Jonathan, Saul's son, rose and went to David at Horesh and strengthened his hand in God. 
At this time, Saul was looking to kill David. And Saul's son uh, had a liking towards David. And the Bible says that he strengthened him, that David was scared. David was, was, was weak. But here, Jonathan comes, and the Bible says he strengthened him in the Lord. How many of you need strengthening today in the Lord? Right? David in Psalms uh, 119 and 63, it says, I am a companion of all those who fear you and of those who keep your precepts. Right? I need people in my life. But then Daniel, we did a study on Daniel last year in chapter 2, verse 17 through 18. Uh, when Daniel, when God reveals something to Daniel, the Bible says that Daniel went to his house and made matter the known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, and told them to seek mercy from God of heaven concerning this mystery so that Daniel and his companions might not be destroyed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Man, so Daniel went back and he had some friends, some people, take something back, some concerns back, uh, and they could pray with him and, and strengthen him in the Lord. Amen? I need this church. So church, we understand that God did not create us to be alone, but I also want you to understand this. God has called you to a family of believers. Okay? Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5 records, In love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible records that he adopted you into the family. Okay? So you are not a son by birth. You are a son by selection. Because we know the adoption process, right? You have to choose who you want. So when the Bible says he predestined you, God had a purpose for your life and called you out of darkness to light, and he adopted you into the family. Here's something that I'd like to rejoice about adoption. Because although you weren't a child by birth, when you become adopted into the family, you have all the benefits like you were a child by birth. So when you are adopted, all the, the blessings and all the things that are available in his kingdom, because he has adapted you into his family, you now have access to everything that God has for you. Come on, church, can you rejoice about that? So everyone here who has accepted Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, has been adopted. We family. We're one family. Amen? So here... Church, the, we have to understand about what is God's family called, okay? God's family is called the church. You don't leave church. We call this image church, but you can never leave the church. Amen? You come to worship. And that is why some churches call this gatherings. But you can never leave the church. Because we are the church. The church is not a building. It's not lights. It's not camera. It's not action. You are the church. You are the church. I like this text right here, 1 Timothy 3, chapter 3, 14 through 15. This proves that Paul was writing to Timothy when he was giving Timothy instructions on how to conduct matters in the church, the assembly. Because anytime you have people, you have problems, amen, All right? Uh, okay. so you got people, you got problems. You know your work, you got problems. You know your coworker, that you just, you got problems, amen? Because <laughs> anytime you have people, you have problems, so Paul is strengthening this young man, Timothy, in the faith and giving him some instructions on how to conduct matters in the assembly. Amen? Amen? But it reads, I hope to come to you soon, but I'm writing these things to you so that if I delay, you may know how you ought to behave in the household of God. Notice these terms, household, right, family of God, which is the church of the living God. The household of God is the what? 
It's the church. It's the church. Okay? The Greek word for church that is used is ekklesia. And this word means a called out assembly. Okay? Not a building, not a foundation, but a called out assembly. So understand this, church. God wants you, it is his plan for you to get connected to a church family. Now, a lot of you are, I see a lot of members of Emmett Church that are, that are here. We're family. But if some of you are on the fence and, and kind of have skeptical about religion, we've got to phrase this the right way. Skeptical about religion, okay? But we must biblically define what is the church. The church is people, not a building, not an organization. And I always like to laugh at people who say, uh, organized religion. I haven't seen any religion that's organized, amen? I don't know what that is, okay? Uh, I don't know what organized religion is, amen? So church, God has called you to a family, amen? But I also want to talk about this church. And what God put on my heart this year for our theme in 2019 uh, in this scripture we're going to read in Acts 2, 42 through 47, is that we need to be devoted. we got to be devoted. There are very few things that occur in your life successfully unless you are devoted. Right? You got your, your, your gym on, you said this year, I'm going to get that body right, amen? I'm going keto. Atkins, right? Vegeta whatever, whatever diet you didn't try in, in 2018, 2017, this is going to be my year. <laughs> Amen? But transformation doesn't happen after, your, after one month. Transformation doesn't happen after two months. Married folk, help us, Lord. I got an amen from my wife over here. Amen. Married folk. Your marriage is not going to be transformed after one year. After five years. After ten years. And I know people who have been married 30 years. Right? And God is still working on that. Progressive sanctification. Amen? So church, the way you're going to grow, the way our church is going to grow, is if we're devoted. I like how we read in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 47. And through the early church, God was moving. Right? So the, the, the way people read the, the gospel, not the gospel, but the book of Acts was a continu continuation of Luke. The way we've been reading is that it's for, it's a descriptive, it's for description. Right? So it explains what is happening through the early church, but it's also for prescription. Okay? So there are some things, it, it, it's a narrative, so it's telling the story of the early church, but there are some nuggets on he, in here that we can take and apply to the context of our church. Amen? So I want us to look at these characteristics of a good Christian family, and this is, these are things that I want Image Church to become. Okay, I want us to, to be devoted to these things. I want this to be the DNA of our church. And can you flip there with me? Acts 2, verse 42 to 47. I'm going to read it again. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' what? Teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of the bread, to the prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. First thing I want us to read. They were devoted to the apostles' 
teaching, apostles teaching. The, the, the setup of how they were, uh, how, how they gathered is similar to how, to how we gather, but the apostles would, would open up the, the, the word of God and preach directly from the word of God. Amen? And so their, their, their hunger was not for the apostles, understand this, but it was for the apostles' teaching. I want you to get this. The hunger was for the word of God. The hunger was for the, for the scriptures. God, God, give me a word from you. God, I understand all this is great. And, and I, I kind of like Pastor Joe, but he's a nice guy. But I need a word from the Lord. This word, guys, if we look in 2 Timothy 3, 16, tells the benefits of scripture. It says all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true? If you're looking to find out what is true, go to the Word. You're going to always have an opinion, and you see that our country can't agree upon opinions, but we have to stand on something that we believe is truth. That's the Word of God, amen? And to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. Wow. So it's not only to tell us what is truth, but it's to tell you where you're wrong. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to find out where you're wrong. You got to find out. Because pastor is wrong in a lot of, lot of facets, right? We have these feelings and, oh, I need to do this. What does the word of God say? Right? And if you have a good wife, she'll remind you. Amen. If I get in my feelings, <laughs> man, you, you, are you edifying? Are you right now? What are you doing? Are you washing your water with the wife of the water of the word? Ephesians 5? And I got to fall in line, amen. It corrects us when we're wrong and teaches us what to do, uh, teaches us to do what is right. And God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. What is every good work? Marriage. What is every good work? Being single, what is every good work? Being on the job, what is every good work? Parenting, what is every good work? Serving in the church, what is every good work? How to deal with relatives that you have not forgiven. Every good, how to deal with the boss who is oppressive in nature that will allow you to live your best life in your scenario. How do I live this life for every good work? I need to go to the word. This should strengthen us. We need to hunger for this. And in our life groups, we have structured it where we're getting relational, but we're also opening up the word of God and, and seeing what it says for our life. Amen? Amen? So get connected to the life group, church. Amen. So they were devoted to the apostles' teaching and to the what? Fellowship. The fellowship. So church, we need to be devoted to fellowship. I want you to catch this. The Greek word used here for fellowship is koinonia, which means partnership, which means partnership. If you're going to have a true relationship, it cannot be transactional. Because many times we'll approach relationships as, what can you do for me? Okay? Okay? Not we're going to do life together, but how can you benefit me? And as soon as I don't get the mutual benefit, I'm out of here. Okay? Fellowship, church, is not just coming and sitting, not knowing anybody's name. You don't know their kid's name. You don't know what school they went to. You don't know when they graduated from college. You don't know if they're struggling... Transactional. What we want at Image Church is transformational. I want transformational relationships. That's the true fellowship, a, a partnership. This is a joint part participation. We're doing life together. So church, you've got to know your neighbor's names. Do you know everybody's names? All right. You got to know them. 
Do you care for people? Do you genuinely care for that person's well-being? That's that. Do you contact people outside of church? Group me, text messages, whatever it is. And I talked about, do you just come and go? So church, we need to be devoted to what? Fellowship. Fellowship. Amen? Amen? Let's keep reading, church. So they were devoted to what? The teaching, the word of God. Devoted to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread. Now, in my notes, I skipped over this. But I want to go back to breaking of the bread. It's something when you sit at the table and eat food with somebody. When you sit down and, and eat some, we can talk about food now. We eat some, <laughs> some, some, some greens or some, uh, some meatloaf or whatever you cook. It's something about when you sit at the table. And if y'all invite Passover, I'll be over there in a minute. Amen? Because <laughs> I like to eat. I'm a foodie. But this is what they were doing. They were eating together, having lunch with one another. But not only they were breaking bread to, with one another, they were devoted to prayer. Church, if you're going to be devoted to anything in your life, make sure you're devoted to prayer. Prayer is conversation with God. And church, sometimes you will go through some things in your life where you're so broken, you can't get a prayer through. And sometimes you need to, you need to call on someone, and we have a prayer team that, that prays. Felicia leads our, our, our prayer team. But sometimes you need to have someone in your life that can get a prayer to heaven on your behalf. It's not enough to pray. Go in your prayer closet. Oh, Lord, yes. I hear you, Lord. There's something that happens, like Jesus said, when two or three are gathered. In my name, I'm in the midst. Prayer indicates, church, dependence on God. Hope in our future and a desire for his will to be advanced in the kingdom. So church, we need to be devoted to prayer. If you need a prayer, if you can't get a prayer through your behalf, call someone who knows how to pray. Let's keep reading, church. Devoted to the teaching. Devoted to the fellowship. Devoted to breaking the bread. Devoted to what? Prayer. prayer. Let's keep reading in the text, verse 43. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. I want us to catch this. Lives were being transformed. People were being healed. They prayed together, and they were able to see the things that they prayed for come to manifestation. It's so awesome, church, where you are in some relationships where the Holy Spirit is working. Yes, I understand. I'm not asking you to go dump your friends that, that aren't in church or those that don't have the Holy Spirit, but it's something about being with a family where you see the Holy Spirit working among its members. And you need in your life to be in a place where the Holy Spirit is dwelling. Have some relationships where, where you see God working in their life. Where you see things that they prayed for come to manifestation. So important, we've seen some babies that we prayed for that have come to manifestation. Amen? Oh, that's God. We've seen some lives transformed. All by the working hand of God. Some people that, that were outside of the church that we prayed to come in that, are, that were here. All about the work of God. But I like this one, church. They had all things in common. Verse 46. All believers were together and had all things in common. Understand this, church. We, when they say all things in common, that does not mean they all looked alike. I want to catch that. 
And we are a very diverse church. Amen? Diverse in ethnicity, economic status, jobs. So the all in common they're talking about here is not based upon outward appearance, social class, where you went to school. It was based upon being unified in their purpose. Okay? They, they, they were together. They, they were unified. They were saying, hey, we are family. Wherever you go, I'm going to go. Whatever you is your concern is, is my concern. We're focused on the mission of making disciples and building families. We're, we're here to advance the kingdom. We're here to spread the good news. We're, we're all unified on that single purpose alone. And church, when we're unified on what we're doing as a church, when you get in your feelings, you'll come back to that. Right? If we're unified and have a common purpose of, of why we exist, sometimes things don't work out your way, but you've got to be unified. Amen? One thing we should always seek in our body is unity. Unity does not mean we agree on everything. Unity means we are seeking alignment and togetherness. Amen? All right, is this helpful, church? All right, let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. So all the believers were together and had everything in common. Here's another thing. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had a need. Okay? Some people read this and say, well, you know, are we supposed to sell our possessions? Right? What we want to see through this text here is that they had a selfless nature about themselves. Okay? That it wasn't about them. Right? It wasn't about me. It's all about how can I help you. So if you have a need, church... We as a family should be able to meet and help that need. Has anyone been affected by the government shutdown? No one. Praise the Lord. But if there's a need, we should help that. We got to take care of our own. But not only that, if the church has needs, if we're to advance his kingdom, we need to be selfless in a nature where we are giving our lives, our time, and our talent, and our treasure to what God is doing in the kingdom. It's not about me. I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> Pat my stomach. It's not about me. It's about the body, the church. Amen? Right. All right. Let's keep reading. So they sold their property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. So I like this. Every day they continued to meet together. Every day. Not just one day. Not just uh, on Sunday. Not just on Monday. But every single day they made it a purpose to get together. I know you got jobs. I'm not asking you to get fired. Amen? And be at church every day. All right? But we need to have this type of love and community where we are together. If you can't be together every day, join a life group. Join a life group where we're going to meet once a week for 12 weeks. And through that, we're going to see some transformation. Amen? Amen. The church every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. This is why we have life groups in homes, right? We've got uh, Sharita and Isaiah is in their home, okay? We've got Starbucks and Jesus. Y'all have it in that Starbucks, right? And Donia bought the Starbucks. She came in and said, how much y'all want for this? I'm a woman of God. And then Chris Williams. Y'all having y'all's at the Cocoa Crepes again? Because they like to eat, amen? 
And they did it after the fast because they're going to be eating some crepes. Amen? In Vince's Park. Once a week. I remember when my son, my sons are playing sports, they understand that in order to be ready for the game, they're practicing twice a week. And all of a sudden, when it comes to church, pastor, one, one time a week is enough. Amen? Tw tw twice a week, uh, pastor, you stretch it, pastor. You want a prayer meeting? Pastor, come on, come on now. <laughs> church, anything you do for God is worth your time. We meet here for a little over an hour, but it's worth you to dedicate an hour throughout your week to get connected with the life group. Amen? So church, look at this. After they did all these things, after they did all these things, devoted to the word, devoted to fellowship, breaking bread, everyone was filled, all things in common, selfless relationships, being consistent in the meeting together, meeting in their homes, eating lots of food. And at the end of the verse, the Bible says, and the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved. Church, if we're going to reach the lost for our community, we're going to reach people that are not inside of these four walls, if we're going to be missional in our community, we have to be devoted to the word. We have to be devoted to fellowship. We have to be devoted to uh, groups. We have to be devoted to prayer. And after we do these things, we're going to reach people for the, for the world. Amen. Last week I preached, if we grow, if we go, we're going to do what? We're going to grow. We're growing. Glad to see you all in the room today. But don't treat church as a transactional activity. You're going to get the most out of it by what you put into it. Okay? So we need you involved. We need you connected. Because God did not create us to be alone. But he created us for community. Church, let's bow for a word of prayer. Father God, we come to you right now just thanking God for your word. Your word is true. Your word is transformative, God. So right now I pray under the sound of my voice, God, that you uh, pray for that person that is right now isolated, that is alone, God. I want you to meet their hearts right now. I want you to speak to them right now, Father, and to find a way to get connected. But Father, we know at the end of the day, the one thing we want to be connected to is Jesus. Amen? That's the relationship that we want. And Father, if a person doesn't have that today, we pray, Father, that, that we're able to introduce the gospel to them. That you sent your son to die on the cross for our sins. That whosoever believeth in him shall have eternal life. So under the sound of my voice, if that is a person here today that does not know who Jesus is, wants to know him better, wants to grow, I'm going to pray that that person right now, every head bow, every eye closed, I want you to look up at me. I want you to, to look up at me. We're going to, we're going to walk through what, what it means to be a follower of Jesus. You don't have to do life by yourself. That's why the church exists. That's why we're here. We're here to help you, to grow you. Amen? And Image Church is a great body where you should be able to belong. Let's be praying, church. All right, let's give the Lord a hand, Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, church. Y'all can do better than that. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for who he is, what he's doing. If you want to make a further uh, next step, which we call knowing Jesus, finding out more about baptism, getting connected to a life group, or serving, 
I want you to see us at our next step table. Ms. Jefferson and Ms. Criswell in the back, feel free to stop by and find a way to get connected to the church. Let's be devoted, church. Amen? Amen. God bless you.